Rachel Holt for Nesson.com, here with Adam Meyer of Fox Sports. Thanks for joining us on our Fantasy Football Podcast. And, Adam, thanks for being here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got an interesting weeknight slate ahead of us, so six teams on by. Thankfully, no London games, so no one has to wake up early and make sure people are starting. We were over waking up early and setting our lineup. That was too stressful, <laughs> so let's enjoy this week where we can sleep in. And, Adam, if you can believe it, we are past the halfway point of the NFL season. It always goes by so quickly, um, but let's get right into it. We're entering week nine, and like last week, as you mentioned, six teams are on a bye this week. We have the Bears, the Patriots, the Bengals, Cardinals, Redskins, and the Texans. So right in there, there's a lot of big names in the mix that we now need to replace for this week. So a lot of questions for fantasy football owners. Let's start with quarterbacks. Who are you looking to pick up this week? Uh, yeah, quarterback one is a really tough slate to choose from because if you look at a lot of the free agents, not a good uh, pool to go from. I know that people are going to have, you know, uh, Tom Brady, obviously the, the biggest name on this list, but you have Carson Palmer and Eddie Dalton also on by. Uh, this is one where I have Brady in a couple of leagues, and I knew this slate was coming, so I was uh, very cognizant of the fact that I needed a quarterback. So I added Dak Prescott facing the Browns. I think that's a must. I know he's not going to be available in a large amount of leagues, but if you're in one of the few, I think you're probably going to get uh, 40 or 45 percent of, of the leagues, uh, maybe a free agent. This is the time to pounce. It's probably going to be your number one waiver priority uh, in replacing Tom Brady is going with Dak Prescott. Prescott being involved in three touchdowns last week, threw for two, ran for one. Uh, I think a big day is in order for him against Cleveland, even though it is on the road. I, I still think Dak's going to have a great game. Um, and yeah, I think other than that, it's it's pretty slim pickings. You might get uh, options with with Colin Kaepernick there. I mean, it's not uh, a thrilling choice, and no one thinks it's a sexy pick at all. But uh, facing the Saints defense is obviously a pretty porous one. So I think that's one option people are going to go with. I, I probably am going to avoid Trevor Simeon uh, and um, Sam Bradford, even though uh, they're facing opposing defenses who allow a ton of points to opposing quarterbacks. I mean, you got. Uh, Denver, obviously. I think that, yeah, I think that uh, while that could be, they, they obviously allow the most points per game to opposing uh, quarterbacks yardage-wise, I, I still don't think that Simeon is the answer. I don't think that Denver believes Simeon is the answer. Uh, so I'm probably going to pass on him. And Bradford, obviously, had a really tough game. I thought that if he was going to have a good game, it would be uh, possibly against the Bears on Monday night, which was a dreadful performance for him. I, I think you know Minnesota, again, is in one of those lines where they got Detroit. Uh, I think that uh, that one's going to be another not-so-great matchup for, for Bradford. So I'm probably going to avoid those two. But So quarterback-wise, just a recap here. Dak Prescott, number one, uh, and probably Kaepernick, two, if I had to choose. Maybe Tan Hill is my third against the Jets. As far as waiver wire running backs that we can yes. pick up, we don't have David Johnson, Lamar Miller, Le'Veon Bell, just three of the guys that aren't playing this week. So who are some other names you're looking at? Uh, yeah, running back-wise, uh, uh, it's going to be, uh, again, uh, a little bit tougher to choose from. Uh, I think some of the guys that we need to get are basically going to be ones where we're going to look ahead uh, to future matchups. I think one guy people need to pounce on is Deion Lewis for New England. I know they're on by, but when Lewis comes back, we saw what James White could do in that passing attack with Tom Brady. I think that James White's basically the stopgap there, filling in for Deion. When Deion gets back and he's healthy, uh, I know that Belichick loves him. I know Brady loves him. When Deion's healthy, he's a valuable asset to this Patriots offense, especially in PPR leagues. I think Dan Lewis is the guy you need to get on right now. One other one I think is a guy that's going to be on by this week, uh, and that's going to be uh, Robert Kelly for Washington. Uh, you saw how good he did in London if you guys got up that early to watch it. Uh, I think that he's supplanting Matt Jones as the guy that's going to get you know the carries on first and second down. Third down still going to be Chris Thompson territory, so don't look for him to be out there on third down. But Robert Kelly running hard uh, on uh, last Sunday, uh, uh, and I think that he's going to continue to carry the load there for Washington. So, those are a couple of guys I'm going to pounce on. I know it doesn't help people for this week, but I still think that uh, it's, it's important to plan ahead, especially now that you get later in the year. Uh, one guy that will be playing this week uh, that's going to be high on priority is Tim Hightower. Uh, yeah, Mark Ingram ran into some fumble troubles there. I think Hightower there, you know, 26 carries, 102 yards. Um, I know that, I mean, only 11.2 points if you're in a PPR league, but still, whatever guy gets 26 carries, I'm going to look for them to get – a decent workload the following week. And one thing you got to look for is that I know that with the Saints, the more of the pass offense at Hightower is totally absent from the passing game. They go to Cadets. 
They have other options that go towards uh, – they even throw to John Kuhn when they're more than Tim Hightower. But if they get a lead, they're going to want to milk the clock away. And I think Hightower is going to be one of those guys, just like last week when they had the lead on Seattle. They used Hightower to milk that clock down and to get the win. So I see them beating San Francisco, and I, I think Hightower is going to be a big part of, of closing that game out. And then one more running back because I gave you a couple that aren't going to play this week. Let's go with Anton Smith for Tampa Bay, playing on short rest on Thursday. I think Doug Martin's going to be out again. Uh, Jack Wiz Rogers' ankle injury, he's probably going to be out. Again, when you get an injury on a Sunday, really hard to come back on a short turnaround on Thursday. So Anton Smith looks like the guy to kind of carry the load there. Facing Atlanta on Thursday, he had four carries for 16 yards. I look for him to be the main bell cow running back there for Tampa Bay this week. Okay, and as far as wide receivers, some guys that we're looking to to put up some points for us in week nine as we make our playoff push. No A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins, or Larry Fitzgerald. Who can we look at to replace them? Uh, one other guy, again, uh, looking ahead to the future, J.J. Nelson for Arizona. They're off this week, but if you look at his past two games, 12 targets last week against Carolina, seven targets against Seattle, uh, at least 11.8 uh, points in PPR leagues in the past two weeks. Coming back in week 10, he gets San Francisco. Looking at his playoff schedule, um, possibly a fantasy, fantasy playoffs week 14 at Miami, week 15 New Orleans, 16 at Seattle, so that's a little rough. But, hey, you got to think that maybe Richard Sherman gets Larry Fitzgerald, might open some doors for J.J. Nelson. It looks like Nelson has leapfrogged uh, Michael Floyd and potentially even John Brown there. So J.J. JJ Nelson's the guy I'm going to target uh, as a wide receiver. Uh, I think that he's going to be a, a good add. But as far as this week is concerned, I know I'm not big on Sam Bradford, but it doesn't mean I'm not big on Minnesota Vikings receivers. And one guy I might look to add is Cordell Patterson. There was concerns of him not playing on Monday night with, um, due to an injury, but he came in. Uh, he only had three catches, and I know one was kind of a, a lame catch at the very last play of the game where he basically broke out for like 15 or 20 yards. And other than that, he would add nothing. But I still think that uh, in a game against Detroit, they're going to need to score some points somehow, especially if Detroit finds a way to, to you know score on them. I mean, you look at the past two weeks, the Eagles found a way to score, the Bears found a way to score. I think the way Matt Stafford's playing, he can find a way to score as well. So Minnesota needs to move the ball. And with them having some uh, injury concerns, concerns in their backfield, they're definitely going to go to Kyle Rudolph, which is an absolute must, and we'll hit on that later. But Cordero Patterson is a guy I'm going to look to add to. Hopefully Detroit focuses more on Stephon Diggs and leaves their window open for Cordero Patterson to get a couple of big plays. And last but not least, there's some tight ends we need to replace. Key guys out there. Who is available on your waiver wire that is primed to have a great week nine? Yeah, just like how you had to replace Tom Brady for the quarterback, you got to replace Gronk if you have him. And <laughs> Gronk, obviously, uh, the first tight end taken off the board. So one guy I'm going to look to replace him with is Eric Ebron for Detroit. Detroit facing Minnesota. I know we just talked about this Minnesota defense, and apparently they're, they're, they have a couple more holes than we thought they were going to have, uh, especially in the past two weeks. Ebron last week against Houston, 10 targets, 7 catches, 79 yards. He's back from injury. Uh, in every game that he's played, he's registered at least 8.2 fantasy points in PPR leagues. I know it's not numbers jumping off the charts, but we're, we're in week nine, nine now. So the the uh, the looking for the the big play guys are, are going to be fun to none. So we're looking for, for basically just band-aids to get you through the next week. So Ebron's one I'm looking for. Uh, with news of Jacob Tenney, he's not going to play on Thursday. That opens the door for Austin Hooper in Atlanta. Well, uh, you look at uh, against Green Bay – five catches, 41 yards. I think that Atlanta's probably going to look more towards uh, Freeman and obviously Julio and probably even Mohamed Sanu, but don't sleep on Austin Hooper. I think he's a guy that could possibly get you uh, some really good options there in uh, in deeper leagues. So those are a couple of guys I'm looking for. Looking at the matchups of the week around the league, who are some players that should be able to capitalize given their opponents? Yeah, I mean, uh, one big one obviously is going to be uh, Atlanta there. I mean, you look at the Falcons allowing the most points to opposing quarterbacks. And I know uh, they're playing on Thursday, but you got to think Gamus Wilson is going to get uh, a good performance off of this. you got to think that, you know, without Jacquez Rogers, without Doug Martin, possibly going with Anton Smith, they're going to rely heavily in the passing game, which means a lot of Jameis, especially if they're trailing, a lot of Mike Evans, maybe sneak in some Adam Humphreys there. Uh, depending on how Shepard's feeling, you might get him in on the mix as well. I think that Tampa Bay passing attack, uh, you're going to want to get those guys as a, as a buy low option. So I think Jameis Winston is one guy who's going to thrive in his matchup. Uh, running back-wise, uh, obviously we talked about uh, the Saints running attack, how bad they've been. San Francisco, it, it's all a matter of who's going to fill the spot there for Carlos Hyde if he's not going to play. Is it going to be Mike Davis? Is it going to be Juwan Harris? 
we got to look at that uh, on Sunday when it gets close to the game time to figure that out. But whoever is going to be the starting running back for San Francisco, I want a couple of shares for him uh, on my fantasy roster. So that's one guy I'm going to look for as well. And the receiver-wise, I mean, the, the Bears allow the most. I know they're on buy, so i got to look to the next in line. And that's – I mean, I'm going to probably pass on the Panthers because it seems like it's the last week they, they've kind of woken up. But if you're not one that's buying on them, uh, then you have a couple good options there for the Rams facing the Panthers. You got Kenny Britt. You got Tavon Austin. So there could be a couple of guys you're going to look for if you're not buying on Carolina right now. Okay, it's a tough week out there, so thanks for giving us those memes to look out for. Um, DFS, for those who yes. are in DFS contests, like DraftKings, who are some suggestions for week nine? Uh, yeah, one guy that I went with last week I'm going to continue to go with as long as they don't have a running back, and that's Aaron Rodgers for Green Bay. Uh, obviously, you know, you have any Lacey who's battling, battling his injury, um, Starks battling an injury, uh, they, they cut Nile Davis. No word yet if he's going to get re-signed or not after he clears waivers. Uh, but if they don't have a running back, uh, they may have to, again, rely on Ty Montgomery. who kind of missed last week with a, a surprise uh, injury there. But if they don't have an RB, you got to go with Aaron Rodgers because they got to throw the ball uh, really high over under there for uh, the game against the Colts. It's slanted right now at 54 total points with the Packers being a seven-point favorite. So I think Rodgers, if you're losing that game last week, he's going to look – to get some revenge and get back in that win column, especially seeing how Minnesota has lost their past two games. So there's still life left in the NFC North. So I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to be a great add in DFS. And one thing other than, uh, with than Rodgers, any receivers basically in that Indy Green Bay game, I'm going to look to, to add uh, on DraftKings. There's three really solid options there in the 5,900, 5,800 range. You got Devontae Adams, Ty Montgomery, and Dante Moncrief. Both Adams and, Mo- and Montgomery I've registered at least 19 points for DK points in back-to-back games. Don Damon Creep returned to action last week, found the end zone. Uh, he's also, you know, obviously really big in, in Andrew Luck's passing attack. So I think that those three are going to be really great. How you ever mix and match those guys is going to be an interesting task. And then tight end-wise, always, always, always go with a tight end facing the Lions. The Lions have allowed eight touchdowns to opposing tight ends. That's one per game. Happened again last week with Fedorovich for the Texans. This week, Kyle Rudolph there, who I think is a lot better than CJ. So I think that Rudolph finds the end zone. He's only at 4K at DraftKings. So I think that uh, with his price, he's easily able to add some bigger names, especially in the running back category, which I'm going to look for uh, some really expensive running backs this week. Last week, I was big on the receivers. This week, I'm big on the running backs and spending big on that. So that's how I'm going for DFS this week. That's a good thing to keep our eye on. Last question for you, Adam, is where can we find more from you? Uh, always on Twitter, uh, at FoxSports.com. Uh, also, uh, you know, Fox Sports Meyer is my, is my Twitter handle, but FoxSports.com slash fantasy is where you can find a lot of our writing. On Wednesday, we're going to post our player rankings for week nine. So uh, we break down quarterbacks, running backs, all the way down to kickers and their matchups. And that way, if you're deciding between two receivers or two running backs, you just click on uh, which position you want and then, you have Ryan Fowler, you have John Halpin, you have DJ Foster, and you have myself all given our rankings for week nine. So we put it up on Wednesday. We refresh it again on Saturday for when uh, injury updates uh, are happening around the league. So we have that going for us on Wednesday. And then, uh, obviously, our, our Sunday chat between 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, DJ Foster, John Halpin, and myself each take an hour uh, to answer your fantasy football start day questions. I have the 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. hour. Eastern Standard Time, so I, I, I'm the one that, that kicks things off, so I don't have to worry about uh, those late inactive reports at 11.30. <laughs> um, well, we talked to all of you guys, and you all know your stuff very well, so thanks again for your time, and good luck to everyone in Week 9.